Unicorn here. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being with me. Uh, blah, 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 for being here with me tonight. I see Josiah Blanco. Welcome, Marhaba. Lisa Ray. Very nice name, Marhaba. Marhaba is Arabic for welcome. Um, ahlan was ahlan. Ramadan. It's the month of Ramadan for anyone who uh, is practicing Ramadan Mubarak. If not, you know, just. Hey everybody, um, Heaven Sent, beautiful name. I see what you did there with the word sent. Tammy's Fashions, it is so good to have you here. And um, all right, so this is, look, okay. Because I'm already stumbling over my words. So this is a little bit of a diff difficult discussion. I'm not sure how, um, this is gonna do, I may end up putting this on my other channel, which is just my legal name, Chocolate Angel. Um, wasn't going to have another channel with my actual legal name out there until it got put out there. So uh, kudos to the people who doxed me. Um, so there is a video with um, Jamaican trans woman, Sasha. I don't know any other name for her. Um, I suppose she was a content creator. She allegedly got rid of her channel after addressing Chrissy in an extremely aggressive video. Um, Chrissy then collected the footage for herself. And um, Ola from the West Side, DC Purple Diva, who is a member of my community. Welcome, Chocolate Angel. Um, I believe you're a chocolate angel. You're a chocolate angel or a demigod, I'm not quite sure, but welcome chocolate angels, demigods, and of course, deities. Um, so I'm going to basically react to this live and I want to begin by saying thank you to Chrissy um, and just having this little fair use audio and a visual thing going here because um, even on my last panel, we were discussing how um, I asked every lady to say, you know, what is a channel that you believe African American women benefit from and should subscribe to if they are not? And we all unanimously said basically Ashira, Star Goddess, who some of you know as Shira Seven, the Pink Pill, who some of you know as Crystal and Karazin, and then of course. Chrissy and then Danielle, right, who was here last night, pulled up her little book and it was just this beautiful, divine dark skin um, magazine that was so beautiful. It was almost like she was so happy to be in support of Chrissy and to have that revolutionary magazine in her hands that she like barely even wanted to touch it, right? Because it's just a wonderful thing to have. So I see the real Erin Collins. It has been a while and welcome, right? So Lisa Ray says her video has been circling for over a month now. And um, I didn't know anything about it, honestly. Um, so thank you for that background. I love it when people in the comment section are able to add um, value to the conversation by letting us know what is going on because there are truly things that I have missed. But I mean, that video was so aggressive and so disrespectful and um, let me see. I'm actually just going to go on ahead and play it. So let me do something like this to my screen so that you can see my reactions to this. And 
let me know how the sound is. So I'm going to play it. And um, just let me know how the sound is, because if there's like an echo or something, just um, bear with me and I can I can fix it. No problem. So here this is. Hello, hello. Let me turn on. Let me get in this chat room. This is hilarious. This is uh, <laughs> I'm watching I'm Chrissy sure. watching Sasha. A lot of people. <laughs> I'm expecting to lose subscribers, but you know, I'm okay with that. Because, uh, you know, we need to talk about this. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this. I'm pretty late on this. Um, I'm not, I may play the video you guys have already, a lot of you guys have already heard about her blaming, um, quote unquote, cis women for the murder of trans women. But this video here, she specifically made about me. Okay. I don't know what happened to her channel. She might come back after this video. <laughs> she probably will, but she's, she's, um, made all of her videos private, right? Um, but you know, your girl downloaded the video. I got both videos, okay? <laughs> I got her video. Can you guys hear okay? Me and is I there any kind of an echo? Uh, because so, yeah, I didn't mute myself, it's, it's, but, but I can't, so, so that there's no echo. I don't know what you thought. And look, we don't have to, you know, bash her or drag her looks in the comment section. Um, but the reason why I have this side by side up is because this is the real Sasha, or I think she had already had work done here too. Um, and this is like the Sasha that's criticizing black women. And in this video she did towards me, she spoke a lot about colorism. She's very, very colorist, which I'm going to let you guys hear in a minute. But as you can see, she herself used to be dark skinned. So obviously it's some bleaching going on, you know, um, looks like she tried to do some feminization surgery or whatever, um, which it's fine. If you want to look more passable, I don't have an issue with that. But then when you start being colorist towards black women and dark skinned women and you address me specifically about colorism, then I'm going to have to be like, okay, well, wait, wait. <laughs> and see, this is the colorism, um, the misogyny, the anti-black womanness, <laughs> okay, misogynoir that goes on in the trans community and just the LGBT community, period, that they don't like to talk about. They like to pretend they're, they're the only victims that black women, is specifically, they've been going real hard at black women, where there's been trans women, gay men, uh, black trans women and black gay men, um, you know, and just really talking about how we victimize them, we oppress them, we're like white people and all this stuff, and we're so transphobic, like they're these little angels. And so, you know, I had to address it in this video, right? And before we get into the video, um, I, I just want to give a disclaimer, okay? And and I know this won't matter to some of you who just hate hearing trans women being criticized, okay? But this video obviously is not about all trans women, okay? I want those of you in the chat room to keep it respectful. I have no problem personally with trans women living their truth. I have no problem respecting their pronouns and calling them by whatever pronouns they wish to be referred to. Um, and that goes for both trans people and non-binary people. I believe they should live however they want. I believe they should have basic human rights and be able to live safely and comfortably and just exist, period, you know, as well as the men who date them. And, you know, I try to be as sensitive as I can with this topic because I know um, trans women and the sound? black trans women are victims of a lot of violent hate. Does it right? sound okay? So I do try to keep that in mind. But just like I criticize black women who are also disproportionately killed or harmed in this country compared to other groups of women, I'm not going to give trans women a pass on their anti-black woman behavior. I'm not going to coddle them just because they are a, another marginalized group. I criticize everyone on this channel if I feel it's necessary, whether it be black women, black men, uh, white women, white men, biracials, you know, any and everybody can get it over here. And so when it's your turn, it's your turn. Okay. Because, and I know a lot of y'all, y'all will key key and laugh and think it's funny. <laughs> 
when I criticize them over there and it ain't about you, but then when it hits too close to home and it's your group that I'm criticizing, suddenly I'm some type of phobic. No, it's just your turn. It's just your turn. And, you know, nobody is exempt. And something else I want to make clear really quick is that this video is about trans women. It's not about biological lesbian women. It's not about biological bisexual black women. This is not about trans men. And I know you guys like to lump everybody together under the same umbrella, but I don't believe in doing that. Okay, everybody has their own unique experiences based on the group in which they belong to. And as, as far as how they affect biological black women, it looks different. Um, Cause I don't see trans men, for example, overstepping their boundaries in the way that I think trans women do, right? So I would never lump you two together, right? I don't see biological lesbian black women um, overstepping their boundaries or trying to dictate what, you know, biological black women do or, you know, a heterosexual, you know, cis black woman, whatever you want to call us. I don't see them trying to dictate what we do. I don't see them doing things like this, making videos like this. So this is not about y'all, okay? This is about what I keep seeing repeatedly from trans women. And by the way, all this stuff y'all are talking about now, addressing Sasha is her name, addressing this trans woman. Chrissy's been talking about this. If, as you can see, this is my LGBT playlist. It's public on YouTube. Been talking about this. I think this video is four years old. Let me see. Yeah, 2017. So, you know, this is not a new conversation for me. Black women, I feel like, are just now catching up because, unfortunately, in order for you, for black women, most black women to learn a lesson, people have to be mean to you. Like, people have to be mean to you. They have to come out and basically say you ain't shit for you to for you to believe what somebody says. So in 2017, when I was doing these kind of videos, I got a lot of pushback. And now that we have Sasha here come on and basically say you cis women ain't shit, then you're starting to see what I was saying. You know, but I just wanted to make it clear, this is not new. I'm not piggybacking off of anybody. Chrissy been having the same opinion um, that I'm about to repeat in this video. This is nothing new. Um, just in case you didn't know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Okay, um, and so, you know, whenever I've made videos about trans women in the past, it's always been about for me, it has always been about the importance of making the distinction between trans women and women because I see on too many occasions black trans women in particular being very disrespectful towards black women and attempting to minimize our experiences as, as biological black women. And they want to pretend as though we don't have any differences at all. There was um, one trans woman I did a video about. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, with this one right here, black trans woman says vaginas are worthless and calls cis black women oppressive white men. Um, so in the video, she said, you know, vaginas are worthless, men don't like them, and they talk about how much they stink. Let me, let me just show you guys this screenshot. I won't play the video, but I'm going to show you what this you know is. said, and this is not me. Just average not adult has five to 20 pounds. I'm just saying, I'm seeing a pattern here. I'm not trying to demonize all of them. But I'm typing because uh, Chrissy uses such great it's language that I don't want to interrupt her. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to work on that clicky clack. This is, this is the, it's uh, uh, the long nails. I can type wrote. quieter, but I'd have this to bust out my Your vagina is worthless. Your one and only tie you think you have to womanhood is seen as a joke and disgusting. There is a meme men share about how vaginas taste like a bag of pennies. Men constantly joke about vaginas, about a vagina's look, smell, taste, periods, childbirth, discharge, every day. Yet you think men love some pussy. The same men who send you dick pictures out of their own pleasure. 
A man's love for vagina starts and stops with the pleasure they can receive from it. I don't make the rules. I just report them. This is the reason I never wanted a vagina because nobody else does. I don't I don't really know where y'all been. Sasha's not new. There's a lot of her. Okay? So you can sit here and act like, oh, it's just, you know, one or two trans. It's not all of us. It's enough. That's the point. And this is not the first. Sasha's not the first. Briar's not the second. It's a lot of you. I've seen it repeatedly over the years since I've been in my 20s. Okay? As someone who has gay friends, Gay family members, I used to party with the gays heavy when I was in my 20s. So for me, hearing a black trans woman talk like, like that is nothing new. There was this um, beautiful black trans woman I used to go to the, the same hair salon with. And we had mutual friends. And I remember the gay men and, and the, trans, the trans girls, including her. I remember her roasting the black women who were, who were fat. The black women whose titties were sagging or whose hair or makeup or fashion wasn't up to par. And see, I know this is what they do. And this is the point of me bringing up this old video because what a lot of them will do, they'll get all this feminization uh, surgery. They'll get these boob implants, these fake butts, and then compare, you know, surgery to natural black women. So your titties don't sag. So, you you know, you, you went, you had surgery. And you got titties sitting all the way up on your chest from surgery, yet you want to make fun of a natural black woman who, whose titties naturally hang lower than yours. And see, this is what they do a lot. I've seen it with my own two eyes. I've been in the same spaces. I know that it happens. I remember one trans woman that we always used to see at the club and hang out with. She called one of my good friends a man because she's, you know, she's a tall woman. She's six feet tall. There was a lot of colorism and texturism in those circles. And they would also, this is another thing a lot of trans women do. And, and a gay men do this too. They will brag about sleeping with uh, a woman's man or her husband on the low. Right? So I, and I, I see a lot of y'all triggered in here. It's okay. But this is just, I'm just telling you what I've seen several times. So this is like, again, this is repetitive. This is not like, you know, and, and I'm saying this because they like to hide behind transphobia. And everybody's transphobic and we never do anything wrong. And let me just say this. It went both ways. I've also heard black women calling trans women men in wigs and he she's and shims and all that stuff. So where I'm from, I don't know about where y'all from, but where I'm from, even though we all hung out together, there was always this, you know, cattiness and animosity there. So when I see trans women like Sasha or the other one, you know, uh, who said vaginas are worthless, uh, it's just not new to me. Like, it seems to be new for a lot of black women. And now, you know, the way you responded to this video with Sasha, like, oh, my God, I, I didn't know that they felt this. Oh, my God. Like, y'all are just so shocked and appalled. And I'm like, where have you been? <laughs> and I know some of y'all just haven't been around them before. But, you know, yeah, it's not new. But I think some of this, this fake kumbaya stuff, you know, this trans life matter and this, you know, uh, alliance with, with black women. And, and the LGBT, I think a lot of it has you guys fooled. You know, I think it has a lot of you guys thinking you have a lot of allies you don't have. And you know, yeah, a lot of them are allies, but a lot of them are not. Or, you know, they pretend to be allies or they're just kind of sort of allies, but they're still going to put whatever it is that they identify with first. They're going to put that over you. Just like I said about Funky Dineva, when he was talking about... Um, OG from Basketball Wives, and he was like, well, at what point can we call a black woman ugly without it being colorist? See, in D.C., right? lives in California, and, and I'm just from Seattle, so she's you know, from but the it's home like, of San that's Francisco, how just like I'm from the home of Capitol Hill, Seattle, so we were literally, we live in the belly of 
blue eyes LGBTQ ugly, LGBTQ America. Ugly. So when we say these that, things, that, this is literally uh, our surrounding. Or straight people don't do so that. So it's not some bigoted, that. I'm not saying that, anti, um, some religious people are not trans, none of that. It's yeah, just absolutely. It's on a basic level, these people anti-black deal with African Americans you know, and in such a terrible way. I would treat myself. And it's a very hard thing to do in a place like Seattle. Like I said, I worked at Starbucks. Starbucks is like the LGBTQ mafia in Seattle. You're every manager. You're every assistant. You know. Let me just let Chrissy talk. This is why I keep typing because I don't want to over talk Chrissy. But my point was they're going to put whatever they are first. So Funky Dineva, for example, he's a man first. He's a gay man first. Then he worries about you black women, then maybe he, he'll care about you. But first and foremost, he's going to put himself first. The same thing applies to Sasha. She's trans woman first. She don't give a fuck about you like that. And most of them are. They're LGBT first. And then and then your plight comes after there. So I just think you guys need to be and be clear. I have no problem. Like, I'm kind of glad this stuff happens, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's triggering. But I'm glad they come out and say these things because black women, you're just so naive. You're so naive and people have to be mean to you. They have to say what they think, you know, without you knowing for you to understand that this is what it is. And I keep saying it, but the only people who are stuck on stupid is you. But you are the only group of people who's not really interested in putting your plight first. Everybody else does that. Whether they do it silently or out in the open like Sasha did. I have no problem with these trans women coming out saying, hey, I put myself first. I don't give a fuck about you black women. I think more of us need to hear that from them, to be honest. So I like when they say it. Now, when Sasha got, got voice to voice with Chrissy. No, I'm, I'm going to play the video when I get ready. I got to keep All of I, this, I, what I, is about to be in this video, changed. What I, All of it. The video. Not a portion of it. Not a third of it. About all of it changed, okay? Because this is about to be some of the nastiest stuff you ever heard. How I feel about this topic before I play this video, so you're gonna have to wait. Sounds going on in the background at the same time. Is it my typing or is it my water but fountain? What is the sound I just that's following drive you? The point home that a lot of you are naive. You're under. You're delusional about. Not just, it's not even just the LGBT, it's other people too. It's other groups too. Non black people of color. It's them too. You think you have, you know, it's this, you know, what is it? Black and brown alliance that does not exist. Okay? And I am under no illusion about these people not trans women, not non black women, not biracials. You, when I tell you you are on your own, you have very few allies, but the number one ally you have is yourself. That's it. But I've heard trans women attack the body parts black women were born with to make themselves feel better yeah. about not having those body parts naturally because that's what it's about. And this is something that a lot of you don't want to address. You always want to focus on the transphobia yeah. and the cattiness coming from black women as if uh, trans women are perfect angels. And the minute we say something back, we're transphobic. Yep. And like the title says, you are weaponizing transphobia at this point. And you're making it to where if we have any valid criticism of any you, at all, now we hate you. Or even worse, we're inflicting violence on them. We're, if we're, we disagree um, about the weather, we're we hate them. Black men are killing them. Absolutely not. And I think it was, and I did a video about this too. I think it was Laverne Cox. She said this years ago. She said that black women take their trauma out on trans women, right? And she she did this video, and not I did a video on it. Here it goes. And she comments, commented on I love video, Laverne Cox, but, but I disagree there. The title is, uh, or she, I think this was an Essence article or something. And she said in there, she said, black cis women need to talk to cis black men about their attraction to trans women. That word cis. And she also said in that same interview that okay. we take our frustrations with black men, or our trauma, rather, out on trans women. That's but the projection. reverse happens as well. And it's time to reverse about that. A lot of trans women take their frustrations with black men harming you, or not wanting to claim you, or not love you in public. You take that out on black women. Yep. And here's yeah, the deal. I want to pause her really quickly. I want to pause her really quickly because 
I've noticed this as a recurring theme with trans women, that whenever heterosexual black men are ashamed to be with them, are ashamed to claim them, they take it out on us. And I'm just like, and, and they want us to have a conversation with black men. Like they want to use this as a human shield to say, hey, she's like me, me. I am she, she is me, we are we, like 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 Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, like the twin thing. And I'm just like, there are dark skinned women who are born women who some men are ashamed to be with. And you think they can fix that shame when it comes to you? Who, like, like there are men who will sleep with women who they don't want to be seen with in daylight who are African-American women, whether they're overweight or they're bald or they've, they're, 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 you know, have some kind of a disability or whatever it is. And I'm just like, there are born women, biological women who black men are, are putting down and ashamed to be with. And you think we can help you with the same problem? You think we can help you with a problem we can't help ourselves with? We don't rely on you to fix that problem for us. Why would you rely on us to fix that problem for you? Black men are very picky in terms of who they want to claim and who they want to be named by, right? Like there's the woman they're willing to marry and to have on their arm and say, hey, that's me. And then there's the woman they might obsess about in private and they might really love her, but they keep her in the dark. And they keep her hidden because they don't want their reputation mixed up with that woman. If that woman can't help you, like if she can't help herself, why would we be able to help you with the same plight? And why are you making it our responsibility? It's because you, like so many people in America, feel entitled to the mewling maternal compassion of black women. And the same people who feel entitled to our social justice warrior inclinations feel that they are better than us. I remember Chrissy saying that she hung out, you know, because she's very deeply immersed into the LGBTQ community. Um, so she hears these things all the time, how they refer to our vagina as fish and how they talk about our body parts. They clown us all day, say they're better than real women because they look better, their bodies stay fit. And I'm just like, women age faster than men, but you don't want to be called a man, but that's why you look better. We we age faster and your, your body is better. And I'm just like, there's a womb here. There's fat here. There's estrogen here. It's supposed to be this way. And you're saying you're like, here's my deal. I refer to trans women as trans women because that's what makes sense to me. What, what the LGBTQ community doesn't want to talk about is the fact that they are a group of people the way Christians are a group of people. They are a group of people the way Muslims are a group of people. It's not just an identity. It's, 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 it's like a, it's an ideology. It's a way of life. So Islam in Arabic is called a deen, right? Uh, a deen, like 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 deen means way of life. So some people will refer to it as a religion, and you know Muslims will be like, you know, Islam is not a religion; it's a way of life. It's how we use how Muslims use the bathroom. It's how they get up in the morning. It's how they go to work. It's how they engage in marriage. Like it's a whole entire system. It, it's it's culture, it's religion, it's finances, the way that they don't use usury or interest, the way that they pay 2.5 of their earnings to, you know, zakat, like, like, like it's a complete way of, of life. It's an ideology. And I'm just like, the LGBTQ has this ideology about who they are. And I'm just like, you are doing what you hate for religions to do to you. You don't want a Muslim to come over and tell you to change your life and that you are worthy of death and being thrown off of some mountain because you are a man who lays with another man. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to be told who you are by people who like you don't belong to that religion. And Surah Al-Baqarah, the Islam, the Quran says there is no compulsion in religion. We can't force you 
to be Muslims, but you force us into your ideology. I can't force you. Like, you know, I, I deal with people who say Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. And me, because I know that Muhammad is the number one name on earth, the most, the, the name named above all other names on earth, the number one name in the Guinness Book of World Records. But when I'm talking about the Prophet Muhammad as a Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib, I say the Prophet Muhammad. I can't get you to say the Prophet Muhammad. I can't get you to say the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can't get you to say that, even though that's what makes me comfortable because you don't believe he's a prophet. Otherwise, you'd be a Muslim. There's nothing I can do about that. But for some reason, you want me to call you a woman like I'm a woman when I don't believe that. I'm not a part of that religion. I'm not a part of that way of life. I don't see it how you see it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You cannot compel me. You cannot force me to call you a woman like I'm a woman. They're like, don't call it a vagina. Call it a front hole. It's been a vagina my whole life. It was a vagina when I was a virgin. It was a vagina when I was raped. It was a vagina when I delivered my son. And it's a vagina now. Why do you feel like you can come in here and tell me who and how to be? Why do you feel like you can come in here and call me cisgender? I didn't ask you for a label, but you gave me one. Why when I'm not a part of, a part of your group? I don't call you nothing. You know how many non-Muslims hate the word kafir? They can't stand to be called kafir because it means a, a, a disbeliever. Technically, if you want to get real, that's you. And I could just walk up to you, Sasha, and call you a kafir the way you call me cisgendered. But I have the humanity in my heart to know that that's disrespectful. So when she got on the Chrissy panel and the whole, a third of the chat kept saying, stop calling us cis, C-I-S gender. Stop calling us cis, C-I-S gender. We're just women. We didn't make up that label and we don't want to put it on us. And he was like, or she was like, well, that is in the dictionary. Niggers in the dictionary too, Sasha. Merriam-Webster, Oxford, dictionary.damn.com, thesaurus.com, nigger is there too. You want us to call you your pronouns. You want us to call you what you want to be called, but you won't do the same for us. And the reason you won't do it is because of male privilege. But the LGBT community doesn't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about how you bogard women into female spaces but trans men who have had their breasts taken off, who have had their reconstructive surgery, you don't ever see them causing men the same kinds of problem. Because both ways, with what is a man or what used to be a man, there's the threat of physical violence to women. And even while he was talking to Chrissy, he said something to somebody like, well, you won't say that to my face. I bet you won't say that in person. And you're goddamn right. Because we don't want to get manhandled. You flex that testosterone when it's convenient for you. I'm a woman just like you're a woman and there is no difference. And then in the same vein, you're like, well, you guys can't tell our stories and you guys don't live our lives. Ditto. I agree with that. We're not you and you're not us. For me, you get your pronouns. For me, if you want to be she, I'm going to call you she. If you want to be Sasha instead of Steven, I'm going to call you Sasha. If you want to be wh whatever it is, I'm going to give that to you. But for you to try to manipulate my belief system, how are you different than a Christian crusader? How are you different? To persecute me for my belief system in that I believe that women were born with wounds. Wound man. Do I believe that women have to bear children? No. Do I believe that women have to have breasts? No. Do I believe that women have to have fallopian tubes? No. Do I believe that women have to have menstrual cycles? No. But when you ask me, if you hide me in a corner where nobody's looking and nobody's going to judge me and I'm not on YouTube for people to call me a transphobe, homophobe, whatever. If you have me in my room in the dark and you ask me what I think a woman is. 
I'm going to stay a wound man. It's a, it's, it's, it's a person who was a part of mankind who was born with a wound. You got him or you don't got him. You got him or you don't got him. That's what I think. But if I go back home to Seattle and say that at some of the Starbucks I used to work at, oh, that's right, I got fired. Never mind. This gay woman, and her name was Karen, ironically enough, white woman. I had a barista who called the police on a man and said he is African American. The guy was Polynesian. It was a homeless Polynesian guy. She said the guy was African American. And I told my lesbian manager about it. And she was so pissed, it sealed my fate as you were going to get fired. She said, I feel like you're trying to say that Valerie is a racist and she's not. She grows food in her backyard just for the homeless. And she wouldn't do that. If she, and I'm just like, can I tell you, as a heterosexual woman, how to feel homophobia? Can I as a woman who doesn't belong to your group, decide, decide for you whether or not discrimination exists for you or not. I can't, can I? But you, Karen, manager of Starbucks on MLK, next to Franklin High School, can tell me, a black woman, whether or not a white woman is a racist or not. You know what they did to me? At that start, they told everybody I was homophobic. And that made me put myself out there as because when I was in high school, I had a girlfriend, right? I did the Katy Perry. I kissed a girl and I liked it. First and last woman, right? She started sleeping with my cousin. They have a baby, whatever. It was controversy. She was 16 at the time. He was 27. It's a nasty story. It's a nasty story. I never touched another girl after that. And some people say, you know, psychologists I dealt with, well, maybe you were afraid of men because you were being routinely assaulted, right? That's a thing. But I couldn't. And when I got fired from Starbucks, just to be sure, Starbucks was in the news for their racism. When those two guys were sitting there and they got arrested for like loitering or something, and I was talking about systemic racism. I got my I got my black ass handed to me. I'm like, I know good and well those cops didn't ask you, well, what race is he? They probably said, is he short or tall? About about yay height, weight. Yeah, I'm here. There's an African American homeless man. No. This guy, <laughs> this guy looked like he was from Fiji. Tonga. But to get the police to hurry up, she said it was an African American, and that hurt me. So much of the LGBTQ community thinks they're woke because they're gay and oppressed. And so many among them, hi, I'm from Seattle, nice to meet you. So many among them are incredibly racist and bigoted, but they don't think they are because they're gay. This white guy from Arizona, right? Managed another Starbucks that I worked at. His family were Trump supporters and they're from Arizona. So you can imagine, you know, white Arizona, Trump supporter, Republicans, conservative, whatever. And they didn't change until they found out he was gay. And um, I used to compliment him every day. I'm a very friendly person at work. I'm very bubbly. Um, and I remember this Filipino girl, this Asian girl, she was like, yeah, did you know someone's family is like Trump supporter, blah, blah, blah. And that was when we were trying to elect who was running. Like, uh, I think it was when Trump had like just got gotten like, you know, elected and he was running against whoever he was running against um, Hillary, whatever. Um, here's what I said that I ended up getting transferred from one Starbucks to another, from one game manager to another game manager. 
uh, they wanted to have a political conversation. For me, I stayed out of it for a good 15 minutes. I'm like, why are we talking about this at work? Why are we talking about, about this at work? But because they think they're so woke, they don't mind because they think, you know, oh yeah, you know, we're going to be on the same page. And the gay assistant manager from Arizona started to talk about how there was a black man in Arizona who would spend his time going to the KKK, meeting them, asking them to validate his humanity and befriending them and converting racists into being non-racists. And the Filipino girl was like, why does he owe them that? And why are you praising that with praising behavior that could get him killed? Here's what I said. I think it was 2017 at the time, 2017 or 2018. I, I called out the year. I said, it is more acceptable in America to be anti-black than it is to be anti-gay. Sealed my fate. He must have said something to me like, you can't use your community's oppression as a weapon against another community. I'm like, let me know how that's a weapon. Because when you say weapon, that means I attacked you by saying in 2018, it is more acceptable in America to be anti-black than it is to be anti-gay. You let me know how that's a weapon. I will wait. But him and the gay male he moved to Seattle with from Arizona, right? They came as a manager and assistant manager. They moved up here together. My black ass was a grass. And I'm like, I don't like to talk about the girl that I was with in high school. I think it's, I think it's embarrassing. And she was um, very verbally abusive and I turned out to be very physically abusive. So it's a dark, dark place for me. And to have this woman who's still in my family, who has a kid that has my blood running through its veins, who was getting touched up by like four of my cousins while we're together, right? Because I'm a girl and they're guys. But in trying to save my job, I outed that experience. In trying to save my job, I, I spoke about that experience. So I'm just like, you can't call me homo homophobic. You can't call me LGBTQ phobic or any of that. When I'm third letter as hell, How, why? It didn't help. I still got fired. They probably thought I was lying to save my job. I wasn't. And um, they act like a gay mafia. They will go out of their way to hire gay people over straight people. They will go like <sighs> when you can do that with an institution, especially one like Starbucks. Now you're talking about institutionalized preferences. So you can have institutionalized racism. You can have institutionalized sexism, institutionalized misogyny. They don't want to recognize the segment among them that coerces a level of hegemony on the rest of society, except for straight white males. Black women, we will, we will just get our get beat up by trans women. And they make jokes about it all the time, not just trans women, but gay men too. They don't mind putting their hands on us. For me, I'm just like, you know, you're still a man. You're still a guy. Don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. If I if I get into it with another woman or you get into it with, with another man, so be it. But this cross gender, don't, don't touch me. And we can't convince them not to touch us. Jeffree Star used to have video after video after video, video where he's like, go get that nigger. Go fuck that nigger bitch up. Right? Kim Kardashian came out asking everybody to forgive him, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he just has a past and I have these biracial kids. So if I can forgive him, you can too. He was never talking about a black man. He sleeps with black men. But black women were all kind of nigger bitches. There goes my monetization. Jeffree Star, there was a mashup of videos I watched of him.
where just black woman after black woman after black woman, Jackie Ina can't get shit in the makeup community that she doesn't get by her own hands because of Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star will see Nikkei tutorials, a white trans woman, give her the kiss of success. Jackie Ina, kiss of death. You shall not grow in this community. Now, Jackie Ina is already the ish. Makeup Shayla is already the stuff, you know? A lot of these women, Rosh Posh, Miss Rosh Posh, whatever, they're already amazing. But when a bigger content creator gives you that handshake, then you blow up. He can't do it with a black woman. He hates black women and takes from black women. And I remember I used to be that really big kid who was constantly protecting gay boys in high school. And I could use the fact that I was a cheerleader or a pretty girl or popular or whatever it is to use my body as a shield for them. And I'm not the only big black girl who was like that. Most big black girls in, in middle school and in high school and elementary school were that way. Not the short skinny ones, not the loud, you know, whatever with her big puffy coat and her little side swoop, jail down, pro style, jail, ponytail, but like the ones who were like me, the giants who everybody called mama or big mama or something. That was an instinct for me as a black woman to just mammy and mule myself out and to protect people. I'm extremely maternal. But as I got older and older and older, like getting called a drag queen, like I remember um, to this day, there's a dancer called Leomi. She's my favorite dancer. And um, she fully transitioned to a woman. And I literally cry when I see her dance. There's something very spiritual about her dancing for me. Uh, she has inspired Beyonce. She, I don't know what her pronouns are, whether she wants to call, be called she or he. But like, this is just a legendary Black person. And all I see is, is beauty and divinity in this person. Uh, RuPaul was somebody I uh, used to and still look up, look up to to this day because I got called a drag queen all the time for being an Amazon, for being a big and tall black girl. So I learned to love drag queens. I learned to identify with them. I learned to protect and praise them. But every time you turn around as a black woman, as an African-American woman, not as an Asian woman, not as a white woman, not as a Pacific Islander woman, not as an Arab woman, not even as an East or Western or Central African woman, specifically as an African-American woman, you get your ass handed to you. You get put down, you get talked bad to, you get your ass beat. Take, take, take your expressions, Take, take, take your culture, take, take, take your look, and then put you down and compete and say that they're better. And somehow we're supposed to be what after that? We're supposed to be what to you after that, after that kind of a soul beat down? Allies, you're not an ally. You, you, you're really not. You think you're woke, but you're really not. You're as anti-black as these white people you're mad at are anti-gay. You're as anti-black female because the thing about the LGBTQ community, they're extremely attracted to black men. So black men, you know, they, I don't know. But it's a thing that they have with the black woman. Like we're competing with them. And I'm just like, I don't want no man who wants you. I don't want no man who touched you one time. I want you to have him. I, I, I want it, I want it, I want it. I want this distinction. I almost bought the book Download Brother from Amazon. It's $14 on Amazon to read on my channel. So, because some kind of a distinction needs to be made. These Download Brothers who get caught by their wives or women and then kill them because they would rather live this double life than be out as gay or, or whatever it is. We're having a problem too. We're getting killed too. And, and if we can't solve it for us, what makes you think we can solve it 
for you. So I just talked a lot. There's more to this video. Laverne Cox is a beautiful woman. Janet Mock is a beautiful woman. Sasha is, is horrible. There's a lot of Sasha's in the LGBTQ community. There's a lot of trans women who act like this. These are my personal experiences. These are Chrissy's personal experiences. I was born in Seattle. Capitol Hill. You can't tell me anything. Lord have mercy, what did I just do? Uh, I think I clicked out of, y'all bear with me. Um, I clicked out of the video. I messed something up, so I'm gonna go back to YouTube now and then go to my history so that I can pull the video back up. Um, history. Here's that snippet from Chrissy. There's a lot of transphobia in the black community. There's a lot of homophobia in the black community. And I would be lying if I said that black women don't contribute to that, right? And I, I, you know, I've said this before um, in another video, right? I will admit that, or I, I, I should say, I, I do feel like Black women in the Black community could create a more comfortable environment for the Black LGBT, right? And I say that because any of you listening right now, you could have a, a trans daughter or trans son. Right? It could be your son or your daughter. It could be somebody in your family. I have a lot of gays in my family. Right? So I, and I want them to be safe. I want them to be comfortable around other black people. Right? So can we make the environment more comfortable? Yes. And me personally, I like to know that the man I'm interested in is bi hey, or trans attractive. I like to know that kind of stuff. So I do think black women should make it more comfortable for these men to be themselves. I mean, Lauren. I said this in the video I did about uh, Malik Yoba. That video Let me know how the sound is. Because I didn't but, share you know, my, my sound this time. trans women has never been about me wanting to oppress them, as one feminist put it, or wanting, or and I think she also said that exactly. our womanhood is so fragile that we want to exclude them from womanhood. It's never been about that for you. I believe they should be able to identify hey, however kidding. they want, right? Welcome. For me, my issue with trans women is I think some of their actions and behavior towards black women are out of pocket. And, and it has done. nothing to do with how you live your life. My problem with trans women has never been about competing for men. This is what I really want to talk about before I play this video. I'm going to play it in a minute. But I need to talk about the competition with men real quick before I get into this. Because this comes up a lot. This comes up. <laughs> I look, look, maybe some black women feel like they're losing men to trans women. But for me personally, no, my me. problem with them has been about the lack of respect when it comes to our, our experiences. That, and the lack of certain boundaries that the I lack feel should be there. Boundaries. And I feel like they play innocent a lot and try to hide behind transphobia and weaponize transphobia. So it's never been about men for me. But I noticed that whenever I or another black woman says that, that, hey, you know, it's not about men. It's it's about X, Y, and Z, right? They still bring the conversation back around to men. And at first I was like, but I didn't say anything about men. Like I said, when I went out with the trans girls, you know, when I was in my 20s and stuff, everybody got attention. There was always enough men for everybody. So for me personally, I never looked at them like, oh, you're still in my man or whatever. But I've come to realize that over the over the years, you know, they make it about them DC. or they make it about. Well, they do. They make it about them and men, because for many of them, it's about men. That's what it's about. And I don't think 
black women understand that. And they say that it's us competing, but no, it's definitely, or maybe it's both, but it's definitely trans women who are competing too. Maybe it's both, but and I don't know any black women. I, say this, I don't know any of but us. But I have to say it. I pers this is just me. Who are competing. This is just me. I personally believe that a lot of trans women are more upset about the men than they are the transphobia. Okay. They're upset. They're more upset about the transphobia coming from black men than they are about us being transphobic. And because, you know, we birth black men, we date them, you know, I guess they feel like they want us more, whatever. They turn that around and blame that on us. They're taking that out on us. Hey, before that. This is why they have more smoke for us than the men who are actually killing them. Because Sasha, I mean, I saw some of the videos on her channel. She had way more animosity and way more vitriol for black women, not the men who were actually killing trans women. So this is why I say for me, I think it's more about men than transphobia. I think it's more about competing for men, which is why I titled the video this. And they're trying to switch that around on us like, oh, it's about men. You know, you know, trans women look better than you and we don't want you stealing our men or you don't want us stealing your men. Which, to be fair, maybe some black women do feel like that. I'm not going to deny that if that's not happening, but you are competing too. I want to say something about this comment because Seattle is my home. It's where I was born. I don't recognize it anymore. It's completely gone. It's completely taken over. And the woke warrior thing is out of pocket. It's dystopia. My partner sent me a video where uh, a homeless tent city has been built across the street from the middle school that my oldest sister went to, Meany Middle School, Meany, M-E-A-N-Y, Middle School, predominantly a black school, mostly black children there. Yes, there's black people in Seattle. There's a lot of us. These people have needles, meth, heroin, and they're directly across from a school. You know who's at that school right now? The kids aren't back, the, the, the majority of the school isn't there right now. Right now, the only kids at that school are in special ed. The most vulnerable children alive have predatory adults who are on drugs and homeless walking distance from them, can step on a needle and end their lives as they know it, getting positive with something that they can't freaking cure. And that city thinks they're so woke that they don't want the tent city to move. There are homeless people, there are tent cities all over the place now. Seattle, Kent, Auburn, Des Moines, SeaTac, Tacoma, like like it was so beautiful growing up there. Like we're called the Emerald City. It looks like it literally looks like a gem. I was born in a rainforest and proud. It looks like a shithole. And when you ask them and the legislators and that the a girl named Tia Fields, who I went to high school with. African-American Tia Fields became the principal of Meany Middle School, black principal, black school. The superintendent or whoever does not want those homeless people to be moved because the consensus is, oh, you know, they're homeless of, you know, you know, no fault of their own, which I don't necessarily disagree with that. Right. But I'm just like their idea is that homeless people are not privileged. Children are privileged because they have homes and parents and and electricity and all these other things so they should be able to put up with a less privileged so 
there's a slippery slope red herring thing going on where we start talking about male privilege, white privilege. Now it's like, oh, you're a kid with parents, you're privileged. So we're just gonna put you right next to some unregistered sex offenders because you know you get to go home, maybe. And they wanna be so righteous. Oh, we're not gonna make the homeless people move. Those homeless people are at a black middle school. They're not at a white one. You're so righteous, put them in Bellevue. Put them in Medina, Washington, across Lake Washington from Seward Park. Seward Park, where, where I used to live in a very wealthy community of Jewish people. Put them there. I lived on the same block as Ezra Bezereth, the synagogue. Put them there. Bellevue, Washington, Medina. Oh, now we're talking Microsoft, Amazon, Google Boeing, rich white people, celebrities. Put them there. Those people are privileged. But they're sitting there at a black school. A bunch of black foster kids, kids whose parents are on welfare, Section 8. So privileged. Sabotaging those kids. Now, a kid in the general population will be able to be like, F you, you know, if they do something to them. But when you've got only special education, special needs children at the school for right now, because coronavirus, everybody is, is not back at school yet. You got the most vulnerable population of children exposed to adult danger who can see with their eyes, adults coming down from their heroin high, human fecal matter on the street. Forget picking up after your dog. Just gotta worry about if somebody didn't pick up after their, their, their high human, their human on crystal meth. People are on terrible things in Seattle. We, we'd be blessed if it was just marijuana. Being an alcoholic is a throwback. They're exposed and they're black. But oh, you're a kid, so you're privileged. And um, Seattle is by and large ran by the LGBTQ community. The second Black Panther chapter ever was founded in Seattle, Washington. So when I say there are Black people there, I mean there are Black people there. My neighborhood was completely gentrified. I rode through it, you know, some years back and I cried because I couldn't recognize it. Like I knew my streets. I knew I was on, you know, Yesler. I knew I was on, you know, MLK, you know, way south. I knew I was on, but I'm just like, where? Where the, you know, I'm thinking DMX, what a, what a, what a hood at. I'm like, where'd the hood go? <laughs> Where? My family wants to relocate to Texas, and I pray that we have the ability to do that soon. And Let's not act like this is not a competition for you. Because I think if trans women went away tomorrow and trans women felt like more men wanted them rather than cis women, I think there would still be a problem. Or, no, I said that wrong. I think if transphobia ended tomorrow and more men still wanted cis women rather than trans women, I think there would still be a problem. And this is where the title comes in. And I'm going to play the video in a minute, but this is where the title comes in. Some of it's transphobia. I'm talking to trans women, right? Some of it's transphobia. I'm not going to gaslight you and say transphobia doesn't exist. Some of this it's transphobia. Lorraine. A lot of it is this Lorraine, right? But a lot of it is simply good old fashioned competition. And transphobia, you're using transphobia as a convenient excuse. That is what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're hiding 
your competitive nature towards cis black women behind transphobia. This is primarily. First of all, hey sis, little Shirley, I'm really happy to see you here. And second of all, I'm really very sad about this. So me, you, and DC Purple Diva are um, expressing the same things. So you have little Shirley who says, um, lost my job at Starbucks to a gay woman. Gay manager promoted her and told me I could take a demotion or leave. And I literally did nothing except work my ass off. Being a barista is not um, a glamorous job. People will come to you at 4 a.m. screaming their order in the morning, throwing drinks back until you have a 180 degree brevet latte on, on the front of your apron, which needs to be clean. Rotten milk, you, you, you smell like coffee and, and, and moldy milk. Like sometimes it's a good smell, sometimes it's not. You gotta be careful. You clean toilets, especially if you were working next to Franklin High School, like I was on MLK, and the Starbucks cafe is overrun with homeless people. And the bathroom smells like a homeless shelter. And I would know because I worked at a homeless shelter. It was called Roots, rising out of the shadows. It was at the basement of a church. University of Washington on our campus. The Starbucks smelled like the homeless shelter and coffee. Needles in the bathroom. Chocolate Angel, why aren't you back off of your break yet? Well, my, uh, there's needles here. <laughs> I'm exposing my private parts and I'm just kind of disinfecting things. I'd like to leave here with the health I came here with. Val? Karen, yes, and my boss's name was actually Karen. She was, you know, a gay white woman who just, she had, she, uh, some of these gay white women have a shtick, especially when they are butch. They feel the need to be physically more powerful than black women. And I'm a giant. I'm a sweet giant, but a giant nonetheless. And if they don't feel like they conquer you somehow, they got a problem because one, by color, you're supposed to be beneath them. Two, you know, they feel like they, they're supposed to have more physical power. And I'm just like, I'm almost three times your size. And she would tell me all these stories to intimidate me about her service in the army. She has, you know, this American flag on her barista apron, right? Tell me about how she used to beat up these girls who were Polynesian and who had all these braids in their hair. All these braids in their hair was to let me know that they were black. I complained to Starbucks about a gay white male who sat down next to me on my break and says, oh, I love this show. Here, look. And it's Dukes of Hazard, and it's a car chase with nothing but the Confederate flag flashing in my African-American face. I had been long fired before they called me back. Oh, black girl, how dare you be pretty and fragile? I need you to be ugly and strong. Or we're going to antagonize you and target you until you get the hell out of here. You want to be pretty feminine? You'd better be a femme with a butch girlfriend. Or we're getting you the hell out of here. You religious? Well, you got to be somebody we feel sorry for, you know, like uh, a Muslim, because we believe Muslim women are oppressed. <laughs> Mafia. Mafia. Shirley, my audience was really worried about you when you went missing. So we're happy, happy to have you back. Shirley, about you wanting men. That's what this is about. Yeah, I don't call myself cis woman either. I'm just saying it for the purpose of this conversation. You see, I keep going back and forth from cis to, to black woman. And I don't think black women should have to call themselves that if they don't want to. 
I really don't. We should be able to identify with however we want, just like you do. So I don't want to call myself a cis woman. I don't have to. And I don't. I say black. So called a cis the whole time. I say woman. I'm a woman. Right? But I don't like that both trans women and black women, black trans women and black black women, are online trying Time to make out this the about it. Oh, the reason black trans women are so upset is because the reason why Sasha is so upset is because black women are transphobic. It's the transphobia. Issa T, I don't know who you are. You must be a troll because this is your first time in my chat. You're going to respect Bio Kitty or you're going to get blocked. You're free to disagree, but you're not free to be abusive. Not here. It's not a free speech zone. That made her do this. It's the transphobia that made her shit on black women like this. It's the transphobia. And again, many black women are transphobic. But the primary reason people like Sasha are out here doing that and saying what she's saying is because we both want the same men. And nobody is saying this like this. So I feel like I had to do it on the video. And I, I feel like many of them don't want to admit that do you get what i'm saying and and look it's okay little shirley one of my favorite songs is uh hard for me to say i'm sorry by as yet and it starts out everybody needs a little time away a holiday from each other so you can take breaks we just we just want to know you're alive. I mean, with quarantine, with depression, with being isolated, with having it having been winter and you experiencing uh, the loss of a loved one, we just. Can I just be raw and honest with you real quick? Because, and I'm not just talking about black men here. I'm talking about all men. Even if you compete with, with another woman, whether she be trans or black or, you know, trans or biological woman, and whether you're competing for men, whether they be black, white, other, or whatever, if you're competing with the same men, it's going to be some friction. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I, I had to think about this for a minute. And I, I had to think about all the times over the years that, oh, wait, my mom is saying, telling me to turn off the comment section. Okay, I'm, listen. What's the problem? Yeah, a lot. No, but we are, though. They want, <laughs> she said they're out of control. Yeah. Well, let them be out of control. It's whatever. But look, <clears throat> here's what I'm saying. Every, we want the same men. They, trans women want straight men. Yep. They don't want, usually for the most part, I'm not saying all of them are like this. But a lot of trans women will want straight men. <clears throat> and that's my thing. Hold on. That's are. my thing with this panel tonight. Because Laverne Cox, Sasha, Shaw, like all these women, it's like they're depending on us to have these conversations. And it's just like, let us move out of the way. Right. I'm, I'm going to introduce this topic or whatever. But like when I open up the panel, I'm giving preference to heterosexual or super hetero black men to speak to or on Sasha. Like that's who you need to be having the conversation with. So let us move out of the way. And you talk to those men who you want, who don't want you, who you want, who are murdering you, who are death by strangulation. Because you didn't tell them that you were you were formerly a man, and when they penetrated the vagina that you got from your doctor, they felt that wall. See, when you penetrate a woman and you're too long for her, you can still get in there because behind her is soft, cushy, gushy womb. There's a depth there. So even if it hurts her, like like a doctor, if it, when that cervix is dilated, a doctor can get their elbow in there if they need to. Right. There's room back there. But in a man, there's no such room. So you hit a wall and it sparks something in the mind of men. And some of them are still inside of the trans woman when they're strangling them to death. Sis. I don't want 
such an ending for me or for you. I don't want to see you go through that. I don't want to see me go through that. We want to move ourselves out of the way. Stop using us as alligator bait. You're using African-American women the way white slave owners were using African-American babies to fish alligators. You're using us as bait to catch black men. No, we will move ourselves out of the freaking way. And you talk to heterosexual black men. You create spaces where heterosexual black men, because they don't want to talk to you. That's what's really going on. And you're blaming us because they don't want to talk to you. Oh, well, he's attracted to me. I mean, if you're, I mean, I look like Laverne Cox. So yeah, like my partner, if he just maybe, well, no, because Laverne Cox looks like a guy to my partner. But I'm sure if there was a trans woman who looked like me, my partner's going to be physically attracted. But the second he knows that you're a trans woman, he's going to lose all that feeling. He, he's he's going to lose it because he's not attracted to men. But to see you and be able to tell, oh, you're visibly beautiful, to see, you know, a drag queen or a crossdresser or a trans woman and to see that this is visibly appealing, that's a thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make a man gay. It doesn't make him, you know, so-called trans attracted because what he sees is a woman. But if when he knows you're trans and he sleeps with you, then, OK, that's a, that's something different. And I don't want such a man because I'm not attracted to that kind of thing. It's not for me. You have your sexual preferences and your orientation, and we're not supposed to be offended by it. So don't be offended by our sexual orientations either. Give it to get it. Are literally competing for the same men. What is? What do you think is going to happen? And again, I had to think about this over the years. You know, think about how over the years I've seen trans women compare themselves to women, criticize our body parts. And in my opinion, you know, and you know, within looking at the inter interactions online and just going by my own personal experience, I'm just not sure if one if one side will ever truly get what they want from the other side. And this is me being buzzkill Chrissy. I'm a fucking buzzkill. I'm here to fucking ruin your dream. I'm here to rain on your parade. I don't think it's possible. Is this ally alliance thing you think you're about to have with most people? I just don't think that's possible if we're competing for the same men. And y'all can say, oh, well, that's the problem. We're competing with, with for, for men, and these men are trash, and they're not worth it. And I would agree with you. I would. I do agree with you, actually. We shouldn't, like, we shouldn't really be making men the prize like that. However, on the other hand, biological black women fight with each other over men. We compete with each other for men and everything else, not just about men. We compete with each with, with each other for everything. So, and that that's not about to stop, y'all. So this goes back to this fictional never never land that I talked about in the last live stream. Black women, you want to create this fairy tale universe where there's no competition. Nobody fights over anything or competes for anything, but that's just not realistic. Trans women are not going to stop competing with us for men. Oh, and I mean, even if we stop, like, I'm like, y'all are not going to stop. So the audacity of some of them to think that they're exempt from black women competing with them for men just because they're trans and they're because, they're because they're another marginalized group. That is not how this works. Again, I'm all for black women being transphobic or non-transphobic, but logically, listen, to, hear me out, you guys. I know you guys are going crazy in the chat, but you know, I, I'm not competing with that. I'm telling you, we want the same men. That's what I'm telling you. Shirley, <laughs> <laughs> why? So you can feel how you want to feel, but they're competing with you. I don't care if you're not competing with them. They want the same men that you want. Okay? So logically, if two groups of people I had to stop this because Chavez, thank you. Thank you for being a merry heterosexual black male in this conversation. Because this is what this is about. This is about excusing my little African American female self and letting your African American male voices take precedence. 
The Chavez says, and those folks who claim they have no obligation to tell heterosexual men that they were born, um, that they weren't born female, man, you're opening your you're opening the door to awful consequences. Here's what trans women don't want to talk about. To some men, that qualifies as rape. When they are having sex with you, even though it's consensual sex, they are consenting under the belief that you are like me, that you have a womb. They are consenting to sex with you under the belief. In, in other words, they're duped, bamboozled, run amok because you bought some boobs, you took some hormones, and you got your surgery. For them, that's not what they consented to. Non-consensual sex is rape. And everybody knows the real punishment for rape. is what? So when you feel like you don't have to identify, and these men feel like they or are being raped, they do to you in the moment what women can't do to their rapists because they don't have the physical power or strength, which is what? When we tell you to identify and you say, no, it's not your business, you're right. It's none of my business. But when you are willing to get your private parts involved with another person's private parts, that's not something you should be hiding. Because guess what? Let's say, let's say I'm HIV positive and I slept with a guy and I ain't tell him, I don't warn him. Let's not even say it's HIV. Let's say it's HIV or herpes or something that's just incurable. You know what he's gonna do? Because he didn't consent to that kind of sex. I didn't tell him. He didn't consent to sleeping with an HIV positive woman or her HP, uh, what is it, herpes, or so, he didn't consent to that. So what's he gonna do? He's gonna kill me. He's gonna kill me in the moment or if he finds out later, he's going to find me and kill me. Because I did not disclose my status. If we would get killed over not disclosing our status, as African-American women, how are we going to keep you alive? And how are we responsible for keeping you alive as trans women for getting killed for not disclosing your status? Now, some people you disclose your status to and they're just like, uh, so? It can be HIV, it can be herpes, it can be trans, it can be whatever it is where you're like, you feel like you, you know, there's a status to be disclosed. And people are just like, oh, okay, and? We about to get it in. That's what you want. Somebody who accepts you for you. You shouldn't have to hoodwink somebody into the bed. This is from a straight black male himself. If you don't want it from me, take it from him. I'm not telling him to say this. I'm not telling him to write this. I'm not telling him to feel this way. This is just how they feel. You want to have all these conversations with us and threaten to kill us. Threat uh, threaten to beat up Yanni. Threaten Chrissy's following. But you won't talk to him like that. One, because he'll whoop your ass. He's stronger, more masculine than you, more testosterone. And two, you're hoping to sleep with him because he's heterosexual. People are after the same men or try to get chose or picked by the same men, whether they be black men, whether they be white men, Asian men, Hispanic, I don't give a fuck what they are. 
With that being the case, I'm I am not sure why you expect black women to somehow move aside for you, make it easier for you to get the men that we both want. Do I owe you that? I don't. I don't feel like I do. I'm Ken Folk. And I don't even think black women are capable of, of dictating what McClay. men are attracted to. We can't even convince black men in particular to be attracted to us. Ooh, Chrissy's getting good, but I just wanted to say really quickly, uh, my uh, my maternal grandfather was adopted uh, by uh, whites. That's how we got the last name Handley. But uh, we are clays. So um, we are clays, and we actually come from some plantations that were in Kentucky. Um, we, we have the photos and different. So basically what I'm trying to say is I'm big and tall, and I look like Leela. Because I'm kin, I'm kinfolk. Um, I have a tiny little voice and sensitivity because on my my mother's mother's side were Jacksons, and we're kin to the rest of the Choctaw Jacksons, which includes Michael and Joe and Janet. It's so, dark skinned black women. So what the fuck I'm gonna do? Like this is why I'm like, what some of this shit you want from us trans women, we can't do. We can't give it to you. We can't give it to ourselves. We cannot do. But clearly, if trans women are competing so hard for men and bragging about taking men from us and how men like don't like our body parts and they like, you know, trans woman sex better, trans women ain't really, you know, willing to move aside for us either. So why do you think we have to be more, I don't know, considerate for you? Because you're trans? Because of transphobia? No. We don't have to be transphobic, but we don't have to move aside for you. No, we're not going to do that. This is what I mean right here, Chavez, that they have a deen or a religion or a way of life. Look at what, look at what it says. It says the trans was ticked off about Nick saying that it was wrong to deceive straight men. It is wrong to deceive straight men, though. It's wrong and it's rape. It's wrong and it's rape. Because that's not the kind of, that's not the sex they're consenting to. But there's their belief. It's like how some people believe Jesus walked on water. And some people are like, nah, you're wrong. Some people believe, you know, there's a trinity. Some people believe in pure monotheism. Some people believe in pure polytheism, trinitarian belief. They have a belief, a deeply held conviction that is not wrong to deceive straight men. And for you not to believe like they believe, oh, you're just phobic. It's as simple as I don't belong your way. To you be your way and to me be mine. I will never believe what you believe and you will never believe what I believe. We have different belief systems. Are you some kind of Christian crusader looking to take over Jerusalem from the Muslims or what? What, 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 what are you? What are you? Are you trying to recolonize Jerusalem? Like, what are you trying to do? Like, you have your belief system. You have your cross. I have my crescent. You have your rainbow flag, I have my flag. Whether that's an American flag or a Shahada flag or whatever, with a Kalimad, like, like, dude, how, why does it have to be wrong? Why does it have to be wrong? Ethiopia has their flag with their red, yellow, and green and their little lion of Judah on it. And Somalia has their flag with, with it's, it's baby blue with a white star in the middle. It's just different flags. You wear your flag, I wear my flag. Why Why does either one of them have to be wrong? Because they differ. I believe that it's wrong to deceive straight men. I believe that it's rape. And I'm stumbling over the words because I'm scared of the consequences I might face for saying that. Not transphobic. 
not anti you. I want you to be however, but I'm just like, this is what I think. Just like if I went to a man and I was HIV positive and I slept with him, I would feel like I was wrong for not telling him. And if he killed me, I earned it. I just gave that man a death sentence. I earned it. How many times is, is a rapist or a, or a child predator killed behind bars? America might want to only give that person seven years in jail, but other prisoners are just like, no, you raped a kid, you die. You're a rapist, you die, we kill you. Deceiving these straight men is rape. That's our belief. It's not yours. So don't superimpose your beliefs on the people who don't believe in your religion. Don't force people. <sighs> Forcing us, telling us where where the, there's something wrong with us, <sighs> because we think that we we think this is right. I want you to have your surgeries. I want you to be who and how you want to be. I want me to have my surgeries. I want everybody's surgeries for everybody. I want everybody's beautification. I want everybody's level up, glow up. I want what you want for you. I want it too. But that can't make us like, I swear this is proselytizing. I, I This is the inverse of people going around like missionaries, spreading religions that don't belong to the cultures they're going to. This this whole belief that they're that they're spreading. I'm a woman like you're like this is you're trying to convert people. And we don't want your faith. We don't want your religion. Lakum dinukum waliadin. To to you be your way and to me be mine. It's Ramadan, so I'ma probably be in and out of Arabic and English and this is, sorry. It is what it is. And it doesn't work like that. And what many of you want us to do is make it easier for you somehow to date the men that we both want. And transphobia aside, I don't think that's realistic. On an instinctual human level, I don't see that happening, trans women. Just like we want more dating options for you, so do we, and so does everybody else. And I also feel, I'm going to just say this and I'm going to play the video. I also feel like black trans women want black women to label the men who want them as straight so they can feel more like biological women. That's another thing. And I've said this before, but me personally, I don't think men who, who get with trans women, trans women who still have their genitalia, I don't think that they're straight. I think they're trans attracted. And I don't think it's transphobic to say that. Just like I believe women who get with trans men who still have a vagina, they're trans attracted. What's wrong with that? Y'all have a label for everything else. Perfect. And I know we're in a time where, you know, we want to completely separate sex from gender, but they are intimately connected. And most men have a penis. Most women have a vagina. Exceptions don't make the rule. So if part of being straight means you're only attracted to the female sex or female genitalia, when you knowingly... These men are horrified. Yesenia. And they're and they're being demonized for responding to, to a rapist the way a woman wish wishes she could. Now here's the deal. Trans women are dying and being murdered. Not dying, but being murdered at an alarming rate. It, it's incredible. Sometimes they're getting set up to be killed. And it's not always. Um, oh, this person deceived me, whatever. Sometimes it's just some trans attracted guy who's an asshole and doesn't want anybody to know, so he kills the evidence. Like in some of these Middle Eastern countries I've had the pleasure of going to, though, <laughs> some of the gay men that they sleep with so that sh no one can tell the story. My sister is a member of the LGBTQ community, as is my aunt. And my sister used to talk to me all the time about how, you know, she would have these male flight attendant friends who would have these armfuls of, of Rolexes because they were sleeping with the Sa members of the Saudi family, of the Saudi Saudi royal family. And I didn't want to hear that, right? 
I was a different person back then. I was a very conservative Muslim. And it hurt to hear it. And she knew it hurt. So she would be sure to tell me. And I found out that I'm just thinking of how hard it is to be a black woman. That's all. Uh, my, my mind just went somewhere. But some of these men, because some trans women are being truly victimized. And then some trans women are doing this arrogant attitude and all. We don't have to tell you. Tell that to the men who are murdering you when they find out that they slept with what was not a woman because these men are, they, they're responding like rape victims because they are rape victims. And it's toxic of us as humanity, whether we are women or trans women or other men, not to empathize and have mercy on men who have been raped. We would high five a woman for killing her rapist. But you're a menace to society for killing yours. Now, if you identify and he pulls some stuff on you, you know, we do we want to come after all of all we all want to come after him with, with torches and pitchforks. This is why people are saying identify. Why are you fighting not to identify? And in the same breath, talking about all these murders of trans women. No, I'm not trying to make you out yourself at the border of Dubai, where you might not be able to get into the country because it's a Muslim country and they don't play that. Shh, shh, me and you. Shh, shh. I'm not telling nobody. But by the time you're about to get physical with it with another human being, you ought to identify. You ought to identify to that person. You don't have to tell the world, but you owe that person. person who has the male sex, you're no longer straight. You're trans attracted. Because I believe when science says, you know, they're somewhere usually in the middle, you know. So if any trans women are watching this, Zero the Infinite is a straight heterosexual male. This is what he has to say. But you're trans attracted. I don't care what the, the woman looks like, what the trans woman looks like on the outside. If she still has a penis, you're trans attracted. Right, Lauren. Right? And nothing is wrong with that, but it's not straight. So what is the issue with saying that? Again, LGBTQ community, this is the voice of a heterosexual African-American male. This is his comment. Moving myself out of the way because this is a conversation you guys need to have. And you guys have done a lot of talking, so this, this is them communicating back. Looks like this is what you need to hear. And I've said this before in videos, and listen, I'm a real open-minded kind of bitch. I'm real open-minded about that kind of shit. Like, I get it. I totally get how maybe somebody could feel like they're, they were born in the wrong body. Right? And I've talked about in other videos where, you know, scientifically, they they match, uh, they match the trick. Moment of silence. Read it. Straight from the heart. And the fingers of an African American male to you. Written statement. I don't approve of violence or anything like that, he says. But the trauma and sickening feeling of knowing that you were duped into having sexual relations with someone you didn't want can send someone over the edge. But you know what these men can't claim, which they're really suffering from? Temporary insanity. Because it will send you outside of your mind as a man. To find out that you slept with a man when you're a heterosexual man. 
will send you outside of your mind. Where is the sympathy for that? Where is the sympathy for that? It's all this selective humanity now. And woman brains with female brains and they're the same. So, you know, I, I do believe in a lot of the science. I, I get it. I get it. So that's why I don't believe in, you know, misgendering them or anything. If they feel like women, they want to be called he, she, her, or, you know, he, or she, her, whatever, him, he. I, I don't mind that. That's not an issue for me. But when you start coming over here and start talking. I've a little surely I have only ever heard this statement from straight men that they would literally kill someone for that. So if you know the consensus, the consensus among heterosexual man men is that they will kill you for duping them into what they believe is homosexual sex. Why would you do it? If I know where I live, that there is a sundown town and I need furniture from the store in that sundown town, I'm going to be out of that town before sundown because I'm black and it ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm out of there or I'm not going. I will reschedule if they schedule me too close to sunset to pick up my furniture. There's nothing I can do about the preferences and the beliefs of people who belong to a sundown town. But now that I know it's a sundown town, I can do something to protect my life. Yeah, nice bed set. Uh, when can I pick it up? Tomorrow at eight. Nah, I'll see you next week at noon. Tomorrow night at eight, that don't work for me. I'm not bringing my Negro copper colored self out to a sundown town at night. Strapped or not strapped. With or without a man, I'm just a, nah. If I know that that is the consensus, the belief, with the party of people that I'm trying to engage, now that I've been empowered with that knowledge, I know how to protect myself. This is what all of the heterosexual men are saying to me, little Shirley, and typing in the chat. So what do you do with that information as trans women? Do you take it or push back against it? People are giving you the information to change your life, to say, excuse me, to save your life. There are so many black men who have been shopping at a Dollar Tree, dee, 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 and there's some old, you know, little white woman saying, oh, baby, you got to get out of town. I, I really hope, you know, they're talking to these truckers. I really hope you're not staying the night here. It's just not safe for a guy like you. He's out of there. He got told. He got warned. Heterosexual men are telling you, I will kill you. They're telling you. And you're and, and you're jumping into it. What do you want us to do? When we belong to do two different religions, we don't believe what you believe. You isolate your people, yourself from people like that. I isolate myself from people who got a problem with African-Americans. I do. I isolate myself from other African-American women who got a problem with African-Americans. I isolate myself from other African-American men. There are channels on this YouTube, this good old YouTube, I will not go to. I will not subject myself to abuse as an African-American woman. If I can avoid it, I will. And when I have the knowledge to avoid it, I do. I will not be beat down psychologically or emotionally, spiritually or otherwise. If I can avoid it. Consensus. Among heterosexual males is that they will kill you.
even if they've never killed anything in their life, because this is tantamount to rape. But we're bigoted for saying that. That's the message. That's how they feel. That's their sexual orientation. They are oriented that way. Born that way. The way you say you're born that way, that's how they're born. You want us to have mercy on you, have mercy on them too. Both ways. Talking about my body parts and saying that they don't matter and I'm this and I'm that and you and you cis women need to do this to help us. No, no. Then you're doing too much. Then you out of pocket after that. Then I gotta be like, well, wait a minute, no. Another heterosexual no, 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 no. guy. Call me turn, what little call me show I don't give a shit. You can call me whatever. It is what it is. Chrissy is the furthest from transphobic, but for her disagreement, Surprise. for disagreeing, she got called a transphobe. She's the furthest thing. But it is what it, I don't see y'all dating a lot of non-binary people. I don't. I see y'all dating a whole bunch of masculine presenting, and I see you going after straight masculine men with real dicks. If a biological woman tells a trans woman they're a man, you will get beat up. A man says the same thing to them. Nothing happens. Or at least now they're well matched. That's a male privilege for you to just come to us and say, well, I'm a girl. And if you don't call me a girl, I'm going to beat you up. Because trans men who get their boobs cut off and their private parts, like they can't go up to men and say, if you don't call me a man, like you're a man. I'm going to mess you up. She'll get killed. I'm not about to crap on men for their masculinity. I can't do it because I need it. The world needs it. Divine feminine, divine masculine. I'm not about to crap on men for being who I need them to be. Their instinct to fight and kill is the same thing that earns you your freedom. Your red, white, and blue, your flag, your country, your laws, your safety is their will to fight and die for what they believe. I can't crit I, I can't make that a bad attribute. I don't know how. Men line themselves themselves up every day to fight, kill, and die for their families and what they believe in. So I I I need that as a quality in my man. And as much as he needs my femininity, I need his masculinity to be safe. And quite frankly, safe from trans women as well. Y'all don't have a problem with knocking African-American women around. Y'all might think twice about hurting a white or Asian woman, but y'all don't think twice. Jeffree Star, Sasha Shaw, so yeah, if you come at me, I want my man to fight you. I am a big woman and I am hard for any average woman to knock down. If you are anything short of Ronda Rousey because I'm you know, six foot 200 pounds, I'm quite the competitor. Biologically, I will never be quite the competitor for a man, even if he is five, six. He can he can be 4'11", 150 pounds. I'm probably still going to get my behind handed to me. Now, if I was a trained fighter, maybe I'd be able to, you know, at least get myself out of the situation. But you will be overpowered biologically as a woman. And I learned that the hard way because I'm from Seattle. And all these people kept telling us, oh, gender and this and this is a social construction and blah, blah, blah. And I went through puberty so fast and beat up so many boys. I was just sure that, you know, I could just, you know, it's head up on site. I got in a snow fight in college and realized I was a woman. Those boys knocked me around so bad. Frat boys, whatever, like, like so bad. And I had no idea that I wouldn't be able to take it because they didn't teach me that I was a woman. 
Oh my God, I went to the University of Washington Seattle campus. We are the we are the birthplace of that gender blah, it is nothing but a social construction and blah blah blah. I, I I'm like, oh, I'm bigger and stronger than all these, you know, whatever. I'm I'm looking up, I got my snow, I'm ready, I'm in the middle of Red Square. This guy, he he was a alpha, alpha phi alpha fraternity. He just mushed snow on my face. And I couldn't breathe with one hand. There is this uh, light skinned guy with curly hair who was crying because a, a Nigerian boy named Maynard was on top of me and we were playing. I was having a, I was having a great time. He started to cry because my nose was bleeding. I didn't even know my nose was bleeding, but Cameron was like, get off her dog, get off her dog. And I'm just like, you know, cause like I have Maynard too, right? So he's on me and I'm trying to get him off me, but I'm like, I'm roughing him up, but, but I'm on the bottom. And this guy that was ready to get into a fight. I it, if it was blood, I, I didn't know that I was so fragile in the hands of a man. That was the difference between high school and college. We were freshmen. That was that, that was the difference. These boys had become men and I and I didn't know anything about the exchange because they kept putting nonsense in my head. There are biological differences that we can do nothing about. And people are trying, right? You got all these black women who go missing because they're taking our wombs and our organs out of our bodies to give to people who, you know, to give to men to, who will want to someday be pregnant, right? They want to do the Arnold Schwarzenegger from the movie and deliver. And well, whose life doesn't matter enough for us to get those wombs? Well, black women, of course. Does that sound a little tin hat? I got beat down so bad. I had no idea. I found out during the snow fight that I was a girl. There was a boy I went to college with who in high school, I lifted his body over my head and threw him on the ground. It was literally my pleasure. Like, like I was the, the cheerleader who, who holds girls in the air. They'd be like 100 pound girls, 110, 120, nobody over 130. That same guy wrestled me effortlessly to the ground in college and didn't break a sweat. And I could barely breathe. He was still this big. And you can think us, and you think that you can hit us as trans women because we both like men. like an adult fighting a child. That's who I see trans women wanting on average. That's what I see y'all going after. And I see y'all terrorizing us because we don't somehow make them feel comfortable enough to date you in public. So I know what you're attracted to. I know what you want. And it's a very specific genitalia. It's a very spe uh, specific uh, presenting type of man. But you want to get mad at us when we say, oh, well, we don't we don't prefer bisexual men. You have preferences just like we do. You don't even prefer bisexual men. How are you going to get mad at me for not preferring bisexual men? On average, you know, that's not what you want. You don't want gay men like that, but I'm supposed to want. Sis, that's why I said we after the same man. It's not going to work. I love that you said this, know me, because... Anytime you make fun of a trans woman, it's, you know, you're transphobic. Is there a term for black a woman phobic? Black woman a phobic? Black men <laughs> will clown you for anything. The spaces in your teeth, your overbite, your eyebrows, they might be too close or too far. Stretch marks, boobs, the lack thereof, too much of, like, just welcome to womanhood. Where your body is scrutinized by men welcome to the planet <laughs> welcome to existence like like this is what they do 
You wanted to be a woman in a man's world. This, this is how it is. Where so many men will sum up your worth based on your physical appearance. You want them to not think anything about you using you, the fact that you have or used to have a penis when they're heterosexual. Stretch marks can disqualify you from some men. How many partners you've had can disqualify you from some men, let alone having the same thing between your legs. Sasha Shaw specifically says, you know, she has, you know, the golf club and the golf balls. This is how men talk. This is how men interact with women. They scrutinize our every body part. They're visual. Don't blame us. Talk too straight. It don't men. work when you ask the same dude. It don't. Oh, but because of transphobia. You, you can see it in my face, oh, really. Fuck that. Absolutely. Everyone related to that Absolutely. celebrity, I, I, I look that anyway, way. Anyway, let's get to this video. Hey, Brass Man, I'm so happy to have you here. Lord, have mercy. It's been two hours, and now we're getting to the video. So I'm going to be quiet. Um, yeah, I'm going to be quiet. Let me stop sharing the screen. I'm going to share again. Um, my whole entire life, my mom kept telling me, you're white, you're white. I never believed her because I knew I was black, but July 19th, I was in your incest. I'm not black. I'm 25% black. And it's my time I knew I was a black girl. Right? You know? It's okay to be white. I, 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 like, I, I, I don't know where white people got this idea that uh, it wasn't because, I mean, y'all have the privilege. Right? Y'all have the upper hand. But y'all still want to be black, but still manage to be racist at the same time. It blows my mind. It's really like such a such a complex race white people are. They fascinate me. I just feel like white people need to be reminded that it's okay to be white. It's okay to be yourself. There's a lot of transphobia in the God, black community. Sorry about that, you guys. Black that was and crazy. I would lie if I said that black women don't contribute to that, right? And I, I you know, I've said this before um, in another video, right? I, I will admit, admit that, that or, or I, 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 I should, should say, say I, I do feel like black women in the black community could create a more comfortable environment for the black LGBT, right? And I say that because any of you listening right now, you could have a, a trans daughter or trans son, right? It could be your son or your daughter. It could be somebody in your family. I have a lot of gays in my family, right? So I, and I want them to be safe. I want them to be comfortable around other black people, right? So can we make the environment more comfortable? Yes. And me personally, I like to know if the man I'm interested in is bi or trans attracted. I like to know that kind of stuff. So I do think black women should make it more comfortable for these men to be themselves. And I said this in the video I did about uh, Malik Yoba. That video is up here. But, you know, my issue with trans women has never been about me wanting to oppress them, as one feminist put it, or wanting, or I think she also said that our womanhood is so fragile that we want to exclude them from womanhood. It's never been about that for me. I believe they should be able to identify however they want, right? For me, my issue with trans women is I think some of their actions and behavior towards black women are out of pocket. And it has nothing to do with how you live your life. My problem with trans women has never been about competing for men. And this is what I really want to talk about before I play this video. I'm going to play it in a minute. But I need to talk about the competition with men real quick before I get into this. If you can hear, please press because one. This comes up a lot this comes up. <laughs> I look look maybe some black women feel like they're losing men to trans women but for me personally my problem with them has been about the lack of respect when it comes to our, our experiences and just lack of certain boundaries that I feel should be there and I feel like they play innocent a lot and try to hide behind transphobia and weaponize transphobia so it's never been about men for me but I noticed that whenever 
I or another black woman says that, that, hey, you know, it's not about men. It's, it's about X, Y, and Z, right? They still bring the conversation back around to men. And at first I was like, but I didn't say anything about men. Like I said, when I went out with the trans girls, you know, when I was in my twenties and stuff, everybody got attention. There was always enough men for everybody. So for me personally, I never looked at them like, oh, you're still in my man or whatever. But I've come to realize that over the, over the years, you know, they make it about them or they make it about, well, they do. They make it about them and men because for many of them, it's about men. That's what it's about. And I don't think black women understand that. And they say that it's us competing, but no, it's definitely, uh, maybe it's both, but it's definitely trans women who are competing too. And I'm going to trigger some of you when I say this, but I have to say it. I pers- this is just me. This is just me. I personally believe that a lot of trans women are more upset about the men than they are the transphobia. Okay? They're upset. They're more upset about the transphobia coming from black men than they are about us being transphobic. And because, you know, we birth black men, we date them, you know, I guess they feel like they want us more, whatever. They turn that around and blame that on us. They're taking that out on us. This is why they. Forgive me, I know I said I wouldn't talk anymore, but I really want to talk about this because I was truly blinded by the academics at my university when it came to my strength as a woman. I had no idea that men were biologically stronger. And I told you, like, you know, as an 18 year old, I got, you know, bruised and basically beaten bloody in a snow fight with with boys who were my age, um, you know, in college. Um, my nephews are only 10, 10, right? 10 years old. They're stronger than all of us. They're stronger than all of us. What we have over them is that we tower over them. So they might think that we're stronger than them, but like we can do nothing. We, we can do nothing. Psychologically in their heads, it's like, okay, if we pop them or spank them, they're just like, oh, you know, I did bad. But like, if they wanted to just freak out on us, like, like what, what could we do besides send them to their dads? Gender differences, it's biology. You can't tell us biology doesn't exist. Um, I've seen a lot of people. Um, so you're saying, I tell people my 12-year-old son is already stronger than me. People are dead wrong when they say there's no difference between genders. That's why it's not remotely fair to let them compete in sports. There are already trans, transgender girls in high school sports. What next? The Olympics? What, 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 what reason would a biological woman have to compete after that? We wouldn't have a Serena Williams. We wouldn't have a Simone Biles. We wouldn't have a Gabby Douglas. We just have, y'all, I'm going to go back on mute and play some. They have more smoke for us than the men who are actually killing them. Because Sasha, I mean, I saw some of the videos on her channel. She had way more animosity and way more vitriol for black women, not the men who were actually killing trans women. So this is why I say, for me, I think it's more about men than transphobia. I think it's more about competing for men, which is why I titled the video this. And they're trying to switch that around on us. Like, oh, it's about men. You don't, you know, trans women look better than you. And we don't want you stealing our men. Or you don't want us stealing your men. Which, to be fair, maybe some black women do feel like that. I'm not going to deny that it, that's not happening. But you are competing, too. Let's not act like this is not a competition for you. Because I think if trans women went away tomorrow and trans women felt like more men wanted them rather than cis women, I think there would still be a problem. Or no, I said that wrong. I think if transphobia ended tomorrow and more men still wanted cis women rather than trans women, I think there would still be a problem. And this is where the title comes in. And I'm going to play the video in a minute, but this is where the title comes in. Some of it's transphobia. I'm talking to trans women, right? Some of it's transphobia. I'm not going to gaslight you and say transphobia doesn't exist. Some of it's transphobia. A lot of it is transphobia, right? 
But a lot of it is simply good old fashioned competition and transphobia. You're using transphobia as a convenient excuse. That is what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're hiding your competitive nature towards cis black women behind transphobia. This is primarily about you wanting men. That's what this is about. Yeah, I don't call myself cis woman either. I'm just saying it for the purpose of this conversation. You see, I keep going back and forth from cis to, to black woman. And I don't think black women should have to call themselves that if they don't want to. I really don't. We should be able to identify with however we want, just like you do. So I don't want to call myself a cis woman. I don't have to. And I don't. I say black women. I say woman. I'm a woman. Right? But I don't like that both trans women and black women, black trans women and black, black women are online trying to make this just about us. Oh, the reason black trans women are so upset is because the reason why Sasha is so upset is because black women are transphobic. It's the transphobia that made her do this. It's the transphobia that made her shit on black women like this. It's the transphobia. And again, many black women are transphobic. But the primary reason people like Sasha are out here doing that and saying what she's saying is because we both want the same men. And nobody is saying this like this. So I feel like I had to do it on the video. And I, I feel like many of them don't want to admit that. Do you get what I'm saying? And, and look, can I just be raw and honest with you real quick? <laughs> Because, and I'm not just talking about black men here. I'm talking about all men. Even if you compete with with another woman, whether she be trans or a black or you know trans or biological woman, and whether you're competing for men, whether they be black, white, other, or whatever, if you're competing with the same men, it's going to be some friction. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I, I had to think about this for a minute, and I, I had to think about all the times over the years that. Oh, wait. <laughs> My mod is saying, telling me to turn off the comment section. Okay, I'm, listen. What's the problem? Yeah, a lot, no, but we are, though, they want, <laughs> she said they're out of control in the chat. Let them be out of control, it's whatever. But look, <clears throat> here's what I'm saying. Every, we want the same men. They trans women want straight men. They don't want usually for the most part. I'm not saying all of them are like this, but a lot of trans women will want straight men. So whenever it's a situation when you are literally competing for the same men, what is what do you think is going to happen? And again, I had to think about this over the years. You know, think about how over the years. I've seen trans women compare themselves to women, criticize our body parts. And in my opinion, you know, and, you know, within looking at the inter interactions online and just going by my own personal experience, I'm just not sure if one, if one side will ever truly get what they want from the other side. And this is me being buzzkill, Chrissy. I'm a fucking buzzkill. I'm here to fucking ruin your dreams. I'm here to rain on your par parade. I don't think it's possible. This ally alliance thing you think you're about to have with most trans women, I just don't think that's possible if we're competing for the same men. And y'all can say, oh, well, that's the problem. We're competing with, with for, for men, and these men are trash, and they're not worth it. And I would agree with you. I would. I do agree with you, actually. We shouldn't, like, we shouldn't really be making men the prize like that. However, on the other hand, biological Black women fight with each other <laughs> over men. We compete with each other for men and everything else, not just about men. We compete with each, with, with each other for everything. So, and that, that's not about to stop, y'all. So this goes back to this fictional Never Never Land that I talked about in the last live stream. Black women, you want to create this fairy tale universe where there's no competition, nobody fights over anything, 
or competes for anything, but that's just not realistic. Trans women are not going to stop competing with us for men. So, and I mean, even if we stop, like, I'm like, y'all are not going to stop. So the audacity of some of them to think that they're exempt from black women competing with them for men just because they're trans and they're because they're, because they're another marginalized group. That is not how this works. Again, I'm all for black women being transpho or non-transphobic, but logically, listen, to, hear me out, you guys. I know you guys are going crazy in the chat, but and you're, I, I'm not competing with them. I'm telling you, we want the same men. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> so you can feel how you want to feel, but they're competing with you. I don't care if you're not competing with them. They want the same men that you want. Okay, so logically. If two groups of people are after the same men or trying to get chose or picked by the same men, whether they be black men, whether they be white men, Asian men, Hispanic, I don't give a fuck what they are. With that being the case, I am not sure why you expect black women to somehow move aside for you, make it easier for you to get the men that we both want. Do I owe you that? I don't. I don't feel like I do. And I don't even think black women are capable of, of dictating what men are attracted to. We can't even convince black men in particular to be attracted to us. It's dark skinned black women. So what the fuck I'm gonna do? Like, this is why I like what some of this shit you want from us trans women, we can't do. We cannot do. But clearly, if trans women are competing so hard for men and bragging about taking men from us and how men like don't like our body parts and they like, you know, trans woman sex better. Trans women ain't really, you know, willing to move aside for us either. So why do you think we have to be more? I don't know, considerate for you because you're trans because of transphobia. No. We don't have to be transphobic, but we don't have to move aside for you. No, we're not going to do that. And it doesn't work like that. And what many of you want us to do is make it easier for you somehow to date the men that we both want. And transphobia aside, I don't think that's realistic. On an instinctual human level, I don't see that happening, trans women. Just like you want more dating options for you, so do we, and so does everybody else. And I also feel, I'm gonna just say this and I'm gonna play the video. I also feel like black trans women want black women to label the men who want them as straight so they can feel more like biological women. That's another thing. And I've said this before, but me personally, I don't think men who, who get with trans women, trans women who still have their genitalia, I don't think that they're straight. I think they're trans attracted and I don't think it's transphobic to say that. Just like I believe women who get with trans men who still have a vagina, they're trans attracted. What's wrong with that? Y'all have a label for everything else. And I know we're in a time where, you know, we want to completely separate sex from gender, but they are intimately connected. And most men have a penis. Most women have a vagina. Exceptions don't make the rule. So if part of being straight means you're only attracted to the female sex or female genitalia, when you knowingly get with the person who has the male sex, you're no longer straight. You're trans attracted. Because I believe when science says, you know, they're somewhere usually in the middle, you know, but you're trans attracted. It, I don't care what the, the woman looks like, what the trans woman looks like on the outside. If she still has a penis, you're trans attracted. Right? And nothing is wrong with that, but it's not straight. So what is the issue with saying that? And I've said this before in videos, and listen, I'm a real open-minded kind of bitch. I'm real open-minded about that kind of shit. Like, I get it. I totally get how maybe somebody could feel like they're, they were born in the wrong body. Right? And I've talked about in other videos where you know, scientifically, they they match uh, they matched trans woman brains with female brains, and they're the same. So, 
you know, a, I, I do believe in a lot of the science. I, I get it. I get it. So that's why I don't believe in, you know, misgendering them or anything. If they feel like women, they want to be called he, she, her, or, you know, he, she, her, whatever, him, he, I, I don't mind that. That's not an issue for me. But when you start coming over here and start talking about my body parts and saying that they don't matter and I'm this and I'm that and you and you cis women need to do this to help us. No, no. Then you're doing too much. Then you out of pocket after that. Then I got to be like, whoa, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Call me a turf. Call me transphobic. I don't give a shit. You can call me whatever. It is what it is. I'm not coddling y'all on this channel. Unsubscribe. Goodbye. But it is what it is. I don't see y'all dating a lot of non-binary people. I don't. I see y'all dating a whole bunch of masculine presenting men. And I see you going after straight masculine men with real dicks. That's who I see trans women wanting on average. That's what I see y'all going after. And I see y'all terrorizing us because we don't somehow make them feel comfortable enough to date you in public. So I know what you're attracted to. I know what you want. And it's a very specific genitalia. It's a very sp uh, specific uh, presenting type of man. But you want to get mad at us when we say, oh, well, we don't, we don't prefer bisexual men. You have preferences just like we do. You don't even prefer bisexual men. How are you going to get mad at me for pre not preferring bisexual men? On average, you don't, that's not what you want. You don't want gay men like that, but I'm supposed to want them. Sis, that's why I said we after the same men. It's not going to work. Don't work when you after the same dudes. It don't. I had to take a snack break. It's been two, two hours. I'm really hungry. Um, here's the deal. And here's what I recommend. To see the video where Sasha Shaw, the Jamaican, who was calling every Chrissy follower some dark skinned, ugly, low self esteem? I look better than you. I mean, Sasha just got done being dark skinned, like literally, like not immune from the trend of bleaching in Jamaica. You saw the the juxtaposition, the before and after, and it's just like she caters to women who are dark skinned and unattractive and i'm sorry you're i look better than you blah 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 and those men want me and not you and if men are killing us you're carrying the bullet i'm like really bullet we're carrying the bullet if, if black men are pulling the trigger we're carrying the bullet because last i checked they were killing you with their bare hands you see how this can become a nasty conversation because a lot of trans women are dying by being beaten to death in strangulation you see how this can become really sticky really quick. So the entire time Sasha was calling us cisgender and a third of the chat was just like, don't call us that. We didn't come up with that term. We don't want to be called that. She refused. So some of us in the chat started to misgender and we started to call Sasha him and he, and they're like, Oh, so transphobic. And it's just like, you will have to give respect to get it. You don't want to be misgendered. We don't call, want to get called cisgendered. Can we agree? Well, no, because then that would mean that I'm not a woman because my brain is female. Brains don't have a sex. Well, your brain is feminine. You're an effeminate male. Maybe, like, there are trans people and hermaphrodites and different things that I really strongly believe in, but Sasha is not one of them. Sasha does not strike me as a Laverne Cox. Sasha does not strike me as a Janet Mock. She strikes me as <sighs> basically the same as a cross dresser, right? Because a lot of that bullying that is with her, I'm like, this is very beta male. Like, you may as well be part of the manosphere. You're just another beta male with, with a feminine mind and feminine ways who is trying to punk black women because you can't punk black men. We deal with this on YouTube every day, so we know how to identify you.
It's a, it's the same thing. It, it's a, it's the same behavior. If you look at the video, and I would hope that you would subscribe to Chrissy. It doesn't cost very much to join her channel. I I've joined her channel, and I mean. The things that Sasha said are so common among the LGBTQ community, specifically black members of it and the way that they feel about black women. And you know, so many people can be like, oh, well, not all of us, not all of us. It's like, well, enough of you are these kind of bullies for African-American women and we can withdraw our support. Doesn't mean we want anything bad to happen to you, but you're not gonna bully us and then expect us to protect you. That's asinine, like, like who does that where? Where does that happen? You want us to force black men to want you when we can't halfway force them to want us. They marry out at three times the rate. 70% of black men refuse. They live and die without getting married. Pimp play or whatever. Like, like, like what do you want us to do that we have that we can't do for ourselves? But you want to call us names and talk about how ugly we are and how low our self-esteem is. And that's why we follow Chrissy, because we're dark skinned and ugly with, and masculine with low self-esteem. Get out of here. We don't have to like you. We don't have to tread lightly with you because you're a bully. You're not a victim. Nobody started anything with you. Me and most of the other Chrissy subscribers, like we didn't even know who you are, that you existed. You were never a victim of ours. We never initiated anything with you. What are you gonna do? Kill real talk with Yanni? You're gonna beat her up, you're gonna kill her, you're gonna aggress, just like the rest of these beta males on YouTube, these app these black beta males do. Yeah, you have a train record of talking to women like that, but no such record of talking to men like that. We're supposed to be impressed by that, but we're we're supposed to move. Same, Tammy. There are some women, especially Christians and Muslims, who have these religious convictions where they're just like, mm -mm, ain't no sexual fluidity for me. Ain't no homosexuality for me. You better. Like, and they fall in love with somebody, and, and it used to be a girl. I, I, I don't know what would happen. No, women tend to be, you know, you know, we're more merciful and compassionate and gentle, things like this. Maybe it won't end in death. Maybe it's not, not going to end in something. I mean, but I wouldn't be surprised if it turned into a physical fight. I wouldn't. Oh my God, Sasha said some really, really nasty stuff. And I'm just like, you're, you're aggressing against a group of women who don't even know who you are, who have literally never harmed you. But that's something that I have noticed that the LGBTQ community does a lot with African-American women specifically. Specifically. And I was just running into African-American male after African-American male saying things to the effect of what Chavez Greener said, saying things to the effect of what Alex, Alexander Brennan said and um, asking, you know, like, why is this person on Chrissy? And what are you guys going to be selfish with African-American womanhood? When are you going to stop letting everybody have a seat at your table? When are you going to demand exclusivity? White womanhood is exclusive. A lot of Asian womanhood is exclusive. You can't just walk around saying I'm white. You know how many people are exactly what I am, but the inverse of it, here's what I mean. I'm about 20% white. I'm a black girl, clearly, but I'm about 20% white. DNA test on my little Instagram. You got people who will be 20% black and be like, I can say the N word. 8% black. I can say the N word. I got black in me. I'm just white passing. Like, oh, so what am I? Black passing? Am I really white, but I'm black passing because I'm 20%. Y you see how that goes? How that gets really sticky really quick? DC, thank you so much for helping me with my live stream and contributing to the fair use audio and things like this. Um, 
Personally, I think beta males are the enemies of true masculine men. Welcome back, little Shirley. And I'm going to close out with this um, <laughs> white passing. <laughs> oh, my God. So um, you're using your privilege to speak over trans people. What is that? I mean, this, this is the nonsense that I'm referring to. I'm literally on my own channel that I built the same way Sasha was on hers, except I'm not clowning you and dragging you by your private parts. The way she was, oh, you dark skin mother effers, you B words, you ugly low self esteem having, and we just look better than you. And you're jealous and you're envious and you're insecure because we're just B mother effer, blah, blah, like, but you're over here with me talking all of this annoying the rest of my chat this has been a very decent conversation this has been a very decent live stream what's my privilege what's my privilege to speak over trans people because i'm not a group i'm not a part of a group that oppresses trans people I am a part of a group that is oppressed by black trans women. I'm a part of a group as an African-American woman that is oppressed by the LGBTQ community at large. You want pew, 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 oppression Olympics. I just got done telling you all about how I lost everything at Starbucks because of the LGBTQ community running it despite having confederate flags and whatever else all up in my face my privilege part of the reason people have a problem with the level of community is because they're very comfortable with african-american women being at the bottom of the barrel or the last rung of the ladder because they don't want to be down there and when we try to shift ourselves it messes up the pecking order and people get nervous So I'm using my privilege to speak over trans people. You mean the same way you guys use your male privilege to literally physically knock us the hell out in public bathrooms that you get to share with us? You call us transphobic if we don't want you in our bathrooms with us. And then once we say, like I said, hey, let them in. If we do a double take, because maybe you haven't transitioned all the way or you're not taking your hormone pills, you knock us out in the bathroom and we come out bloody. And no man was able to re rescue us from your male strength because they weren't allowed into the bathroom the way that you were. I told the story on my channel several times about a straight woman who was raped by a trans woman in a homeless shelter. That trans woman had no sexual attraction to that biological woman. That trans woman used her penis as a weapon to beat that woman in the deepest part of her body as a retaliation for stealing her wallet. You see, I, I would not have had, I would not have been able to do that. Maybe it had been a regular fight. Maybe it had been an argument, giving my ish back, be whatever, a cuss out. But as a biological woman, I can't go there. But you know what? That trans woman was allowed to sleep on the side of the homeless shelter that only women were allowed on because they were afraid for what would happen if she slept with a man. Feared for her safety, only for her to violate the safety of biological women. So it's a trend then. Oh, what is this? I did, Loren, I don't know. I would have loved to make this a panel, but honestly, I talked so much that this is just too long and now I'm tired. So um, 
it's possible that this be a discontinued. It is possible that I will have a panel full of men up here just to chime in on the topic. Because like I said, look at this Issa T person. Is a T, Issa T, whatever it is. Like the, the the person is clearly, I mean, just 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 like the rest of the beta male, you know, manosphere, whatever. Like you keep going after women in the chat. Talk to some of these men. <laughs> this is a joke. You just bully women. You got to be nice to get nice. I mean, if you have a wrench and somebody said said something you didn't like for them to say, uh, Nia, I'm on StreamYard, so I can't see if anybody has a wrench. But if you do, just time the person out. You know, you have the right in my chat, especially as members of my channel, to teach people how to speak to you. Um, I'm not, not one for the verbal uh abuse uh fun news don't lie on me so you're using one trans woman to demonize a whole community don't lie on me are you pretending cis men don't rape cis women every day i'm a rape victim and in a survivor of domestic violence you're a troll now i see why you don't have a picture and you have a fake name like fun news your name should be fake news um stop spreading your hate and get some therapy i've had actually over eight years of therapy but um, what I wanted to say was, we're not using Sasha to depict an entire community. What we're using Sasha as an example of is things that we have suffered from in our real lives. So you're here late, fun news, I didn't see any part of you in the chat earlier, but um, I'm from Seattle, Capitol Hill. I was born at the University of Washington Hospital. I was raised in the Central District of Seattle. So when you're talking Broadway, you're talking Capitol Hill, you're talking the gay capital of America, you're talking the LGBTQ capital of America. And all of us went through uh, DC Purple Diva, different people went through what we have suffered at the hands of the LGBTQ community. And Sasha is one person and a sucky representative at that. You didn't hear all the praise that people in the chat as well as me were throwing at Laverne Cox and at, um, Janet Mock, because you're late and you're uninformed. This is a two hour and 30 minute live stream. You can go back through it and watch. But like, I'm really, um, what a loser. Look at this. You know what you sound like? You sound like, um, you sound like the straight men who, you know how, hey, you guys, you know how like 97% of women have been sexually assaulted and most men don't know a rapist. Isn't this what this sounds like? Provide evidence, boo. I'm gonna give you evidence for my for my lived experiences. I'm gonna give you evidence from my friends. That, what what did you think that I took a picture? Is that what you is that what you want? You think I took pictures or photos of the last guy that hit me or the last trans woman or gay person? You think what? I recorded it. All of the women in this chat for these two hours have been having these discussions. Maybe you ought to go back through it and read it. So if you're going to say something is non-existent and it doesn't exist, first of all, that's gaslighting. Congratulations. That's what a lot of weak men do to women. They gaslight. They try to talk you out of your reality. And you are trying to like call me an oppressor, but you're literally trying to practice hegemony over this conversation. The entitlement. Oh, okay, I get it. It's a, it's a loser. It's a trend to be oppressed. It, exactly, Lorraine. It's a trend to be oppressed. It's a trend to be the most disadvantaged. It's a competition who has suffered the most. Straight men are not raping men. Please stop the cap. Uh, what does it say? Uh, thanks, Lorraine. I'm going to go ahead and go to... Um, 
And I'll end with this from a heterosexual black male who the trans community really needs to be having these conversations with. It's it's not us. It's not black women that need to do anything with or for you. You you have spoken on us time and time again. Time and time again, with or without Sasha, with or without, no, we get it. We don't have allies. But since these are the men you want to sleep with, you, you want Aaron. You want heterosexual men. Fun news, you sound like you're deflecting and justifying Black women's oppression. This ain't the space for that. Around here, we protect that Bidina corn. Aww, I didn't even read the comment. I wish I would have read it earlier. Good night, you guys. Good night, Terry. Love you guys so much. Night, Alexander. I'm up and I'm out of here.